good afternoon good afternoon and very good afternoon yeah today it's I'm making this video in the daylight daytime usually I make videos in night and door but today I thought okay let me do something different daylight coming from the window and I'm making this video well today's topic is going to be really uh, interesting because today I'm going to tell you my all-time favorite black and white camera yep I'm specifically talking about just camera no lenses nothing just camera in past I make several videos about my all-time favorite camera <clears throat> which was D700 yep D700 D700 is still my uh, the camera that I love the second most lovely thing yeah, so D700 uh, is there, but uh, uh, then followed by, in, actually in past, D700 was my all-time favorite black and white camera. I used to take a lot of black and white camera, and then I had D850, right? D850 was my second most favorite black and white camera. Now, what's the, what was the difference between D700 and D850? Well, technically speaking, of course, D850 is superior, but D700 have something very unique, which was never been found in any other camera. What D700 have, still have, is its bare filter. The bare filter inside D700, let me show you, that's my lovely D700. I bought this camera like eight, nine years ago. Nine years ago, yep. And I still have its box. I bought it zero meter. It was broken. It was repaired by Nikon by importing the pads from Japan. And uh, I love this camera. So that was my all time favorite black and white cam. That was. Uh, what about just the best quality about D700 when it comes to shooting black and white specifically is the tonal. What exactly makes D700 superior? It's bare filter. The bare filter which is placed on top of the sensor of D700 is very unique. And uh, it's so unique that it produces the tones or the color uh, which is still found to be the best by any DSLR and I mean any DSLR the second best camera uh, which come close to D700 was D850 and there, of course there are other cameras from other manufacturer like Sony A7R3 very very great camera can produce very rich color when it comes to black and white tonality I was not able to get impressed or maybe you say well it depends on the photographer how much edit it takes well I, I looked a lot of images um, from A7R3 still it, I was not able to see any and there are thousands and thousands of photos taken by A7R3 but still none of them were able to have these rich tones of grey from pure white to pure black which D700 able to produce. That camera is still like 14 years old. That's this camera. So this was this bare filter was making D700 the best camera. And uh, I used to have all the tone, most of the tones, right from the camera. I don't have to push the raw files in post processing. That was the advantage of using D700. Now, the second best camera that I have, that I use actually, was D850. D850, no doubt, no doubt, uh, is still uh, considered to be the king of the all the DSLR. And I mean all the DSLR. The color reproduction, the, the image quality that coming out from it, it's unparalleled. And the second, uh, of course, A7R3 
which was very close to near 50 when it comes to output especially low light performance the a7r3 perform better than the 50 in low light performance so i found the 50 after d700 my second most favorite camera for black and white what was the advantage of having d850 well d850 first of all you won't get all these tones right from the camera like d700 d700 gives you all the tones right from the camera so it means that you don't have to push the raw files in post processing to get the required gray tones on the other hand d850 it, it uh, has an art firmware inside the d850 is so strong it's so strong that you can get almost any kind of tones in post-processing. Of course, D850 doesn't give you that tonality right from the camera which D700 gives you. That's, that's the major difference between D700 and D850. So D700 gives you all the tones right from the camera so you don't have to push the raw files in post-processing. On the other hand, D850 doesn't have uh, doesn't give you all the tones right from the camera but you can push the raw file so much and I mean so much in post processing that you can get almost any kind of gray tones which makes your black and white photography pop up like you have you have darker uh, you know shadows and bright uh, highlights and you want to get the best out of the in, into the middle you can get that from d850 that's the advantage of having d850 for black and white photography and that that the degradation or the gradation between pure white to pure black that that's something really stunning when you work on the raw files of d850 and of course d700 gives you everything right from the ground okay so I, I'm just still talking about D700, D850, but these two not my all-time favorite cameras. There is another camera I want to talk about. I'm going to tell you what's my most favorite camera of all time, black and white photography. Before that, before I unveil that camera, I'm going to tell you the best crop sensor camera which I found best for black and white photography. And I, I was just looking at the images like a few minutes ago and I was stunned by the type of tonality I was getting in prose processing. And that camera is Nikon D7200. Yep, D7200, D7200 by far the best APS-C or crop sensor camera from Nikon when it comes to image quality. I am specifically talking about image quality because image quality defines what kind of tones you can get from the raw files for black and white photography. It defines from the raw files. And I was surprised that all the attributes that D700F and D850F, like D700 gives you most of the tone, and D850 you can get all the tools in post processing somehow D7200 gives you a part of both in the same body yeah you can get most of the tools just like D700 in D7200 right from the camera and on top of that you can extract or further tones for black and white photography in post processing just like this 850 in D7200 so D7200 contains a part of both but of course you won't get that kind of full potential in D7200 camera body but still you can get like 90% of D700 D700 attribute and D850 attribute into the same D7200 camera body especially at low ISO value and I'm talking about strictly under 1000 ISO you can get everything almost everything 
the best tonality right from the camera for black and white photography as well as the capability of raw files to get more tones in post processing D7200 and I highly recommend if you need a cheaper camera which can give you everything especially for black and white photography go and buy D7200 but for that you need good lenses which we'll discuss later okay enough from different camera let's come to the main camera uh, the main uh, hero uh, yep let me introduce so here it is my all time black and white favorite camera yep Fujifilm GFX 50R yes that's a medium format Fujifilm GFX 50R is right now currently the cheapest medium format camera that you can get it's so cheap that the high-end full-frame cameras are expensive than this camera body so these uh, GFX 50R have the 100% capability of D700 which gives you all the tonalities I mean all the tonalities right from the camera as well as its raw file of GFX 50R gives you so much latitude in post processing that you can extract all the different shares of gray in post processing just like D850 yes so GFX 50R gives you D700 and D850 in the same body and of course that's 50 megapixels so you can imagine what kinds of resolution you are going to get from D850 I'm sorry GFX GFX 50R GFX 50R but there is a catch of course no camera body is perfect so what's the catch first of all it's a slow machine it's very slow machine all right it's not like any full frame like D850 or A7S3 or, or, or your Z9 it's not like that not at all the maximum frames per second is three three frames per second all right and uh, it's autofocus is not as fast as current generation or new you know currently available new mirrorless cameras but the image quality that you can get from GFX 50R I, I personally believe it surpasses the D850 it surpasses the uh, your Sony A7R4 it surpasses even Sony A1 or Canon R5 I'm strictly talking about image quality I'm not talking about high ISO I'm not talking about dynamic range at all the image quality the second thing when we talk about image quality the colors the rendition the tonality then we talk about dynamic range the dynamic range of GFX 50R damn I mean damn like I said this camera gives me so much tonality in post processing just like D850 that I don't have to worry about anything I know I can get all the tones in black and white but it you know if, uh, if I have to push the raw files too much in post processing I know I can get all, all the tones from this machine it has this potential the latitude of post processing that I can get from this machine is ample but there is a limit for uh, of this machine when it comes to just like any other machine this machine also have a certain limit you can get of course all the tones and all the, everything but to a certain point you you don't expect that uh, uh, there is a shadow area which you can you didn't see anything and you you don't increase the slider by 100 percent and you think that you able to extract all the details yeah you will but uh, it will be meshy the white balance over there on that shadow area will be worse it will be more greeny greenish type 
so you 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 get you know those uh, green tint in the shadow area once you go for shadow recovery just like any other camera so it has a limitation it's not a perfect machine and same goes for d700 same goes for d850 same goes for a7r3 a7r4 or or a1 or even you know the canon 5ds 5dsr or r3 or even r5 or r7 it applies for every camera so but under the normal operating of course you don't expect that you shot five big stops under exposed and that you think okay i i shot five stop under exposed and able to recover uh you know exposure and post processing if you're thinking and do photography like this then you don't know how to take your photos no offense but that's how it is all right so but i'm strictly talking about the tonality that we need for black and white photography the raw files of gfx 50r gives you so much latitude that uh, it's like wow and i mean really wow first of all you get all the tonality right from the camera just like d700 and further on top of that you have all the flexibility in the world to get further tones out from the raw file if you need in post processing but this camera has a certain requirement to get everything for you yeah it has a certain requirement and you need to understand that what those requirements are first of all it's video format so sensor is big so when the sensor is big it means that any micro vibration or any micro shake even if you press the shutter release or anything it will affect your final image it you will get micro blur because it's 50 megapixel and the sensor is big so when any physical body which is big enough and you shake a little bit it shakes the whole body a lot it's just like but if the sensor is small the same amount of shake won't affect that small sensor for example you have two floor building and you have 10 floor building if earthquake comes the shake that the person feel on the two floor building on, on the roof of the two floor building is less in compared to the roof of the 10 floor building if earthquake comes at the of the same magnitude because its height is big so it it you know it shakes more same applies over here in in gfx 50r because this video format sensor is big so you have to take care and try to operate the camera most of the time on tripod second thing so i'm just talking about how to take photos from gfx 50r because i don't want you get blurry images second thing you need good lenses now well, well it's a medium format uh, the lenses are so expensive no it's not trust me <laughs> this is the adopter this is gfx 50r this is the adopter and this is the pentax lens it's a manual focus lens uh, pentax 6x7 format is 110 mm f 2.4 which is f2 in terms of uh, actually in terms of not f2 uh, in terms of full frame it's 50 mm 1.2 yeah, because the sensor for which this lens was made it's twice in the size of full frame so the crop factor is multiplied by 2 from full frame to 6x7 format so 6x7 format 110 f 2.4 is equal to 50 mm f 1.2 for full frame so this lens it somehow sits in between for gfx 50r because it is designed for 6x7 format which is bigger than medium format so i'm just adopting it and i'm getting a very sharp images like crazy of course this lens is not able to resolve the amount of detail that this sensor is capturing at 100 percent but when you see at full view you get all images sharp just like that and i mean really i'm using this lens as a portrait 110 f 2.4 on gfx 50r 
for a very long time because I have for me the native uh, GFX lens for portrait 110 mm f2 is very 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 expensive so I, I searched I found a way to adopt the lens I bought the adopter I bought the lens it cost me a lot cheaper of course I compromised on manual focus for me I, I can do that manual focus because uh, this camera is not fast if you want to take a portrait you have to plan everything to use this machine it's not like you can oh yeah stand there move that tuck, tuck. it's not like that this machine asks you to have as much as patience as possible to operate it it's not fast it's just like you are having a dumper a big you know sand dumper which travels like only 20 kilometers or 30 kilometers per hour not fast enough it's heavy it's slow but it does the job it can dump tons and tons of sand from one place to another it's huge and compared to any 4x4 or any saloon car which is fast but it cannot carry tons and tons of sand it's a simple analogy so patience is all this camera asks you for to operate that's I am so, so I'm sorry I'm a little diverted uh, from the main topic because this machine is so awesome and I mean so awesome that you can't believe right now it's cheaper than any high-end full-frame camera is even cheaper than your Sony A7R4. It's cheaper than your uh, 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 Canon R5. Yeah, it's cheaper. So imagine you only want to shoot landscape, and you are going for 45 megapixel Canon R5, and, or you are going for Z72 Nikon, or you want to go with Sony A7R4, 61 megapixel. And you are a landscape shooter or portrait shooter. These two are famous. I understand that. So imagine both of these doesn't need fast operation. Yeah, it doesn't both landscape and portrait doesn't need you to go fast. You can take your time. That's where this camera fills, fits in perfectly and it's cheaper than R5, A7R4, Z7 II right now. I, I'm not being paid by anybody. I'm just talking facts. I'm a hardcore Nikon user, hardcore Nikon user. But when it comes to tell you the technicalities or which is the best for whatever you want to shoot, I'm trying to be neutral. I always try to. Yeah, I know some of you are laughing and when I use the word neutral. <laughs> I know what you mean, but I'm just talking about the black and white photography, which most of you don't do. So, the people who do black and white photography, please do try GFX 50. Do try, not 50, I mean, do try GFX medium format, especially GFX 50R. It's the cheapest media format, cheaper than full frame, and it gives you everything that you need. The tonality right from the camera, and also the latitude in post processing. That's it. When it comes to lenses, well, that's another topic we'll cover in some other video. I hope you enjoyed this video with some facts that I shared with you, and GFX 50R, the best black and white camera in my opinion today which is July 2022 oh I don't know thank you very much and I'll see you there some other time till then